All right, we're back. We're on page 131 of math analysis. We are talking about 2D vectors. We've done some dot product stuff. Uh, we talked about acute angles, obtuse angles. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a very famous problem uh, that's related to the concept of the dot product and see what we can do with it. So uh, here's what we want to do. So a uh, very famous thing to do with vectors, find a pair of orthogonal vectors. So I'm going to try to like highlight this in there. So a pair of orthogonal vectors. Uh, and then they are going to uh, sum to some other given vector. Uh, hold on, went too far with that. Given vector uh, with one of the vectors parallel to another given vector. So like, what the heck? So we're looking for two vectors. They're going to be orthogonal, so they're at right angles to each other. They add up to a specific vector that we are given, and one of them is parallel to another vector. So here's the picture uh, of that kind of scenario. So what we're trying to do is uh, they're going to sum up. OK, so we want two vectors that sum up to this. So they're going to add up to that. Now, the two vectors that we find are going to be orthogonal to each other, and one of them is going to be parallel to this vector. So it's kind of weird. So in this scenario, what we are given is we're looking for vectors a and b. So I'm going to just say that uh, this vector here is going to be the vector a, and this is going to be the vector b. So we want a and b. We know that a and b are orthogonal, right? So a is perpendicular to b, or orthogonal to b. So that's that. And then we know that a is going to be parallel to u. So u is this vector. Uh, it's, it's hard to, hmm, how to do, let's see. Uh, so this vector right here is the vector u. So I, I understand that that is not great. Um, but a is parallel to u. So a is parallel to u, which means it's scalar multiple, right? So uh, a is parallel to u. And we also know that a and b are going to add up to the vector v. So v is that first vector that I had highlighted. Um, this is vector v. So we know that a plus b has to equal v. So I'm probably going to stop with all this color coding stuff because it's driving me nuts. Um, but that's the scenario. Okay, so in this scenario, what are you given? You are given the vector u and you're given the vector v. You know that you want two vectors that add up to v, and those two vectors have to be orthogonal to each other, and one of them needs to be parallel to the vector u. So there's kind of a lot going on. So let's see if we can work out. Uh, so I mean, specifically in this case, uh, we are given that v is 8, 4, and that u is 6, 1. But like, it's a general process that we need to be able to do. So let's see if we can uh, work our way through this, which you definitely can. I mean, it's, it, it's the same, same steps every time, so you can do it, I'm pretty confident. All right, so here we go. We're going to say that uh, this picture is like slightly different. So this is the angle between, this is going to be v, the vector that they're going to add up to. This is the vector u, which is parallel to one of the vectors. And then A is this vector, and B is this vector, and we know they make that. All right, so we know we are given U and V. Like we know those vectors to begin with. So these are the ones that we know. We're trying to find A and B. You got to keep that in mind. So the angle between the vectors, using the vectors we are given, so we're given U and V, we know that the cosine of theta, the angle between them, is going to be u dot v over the magnitude of u, magnitude of v. OK, so one thing that's kind of important to realize here is like uh, the dot product could be negative. I mean, in this picture, the dot product is definitely positive because the angle is definitely acute. So we do some stuff here, and what you really get is like a directed magnitude. So like we, we might end up with a negative potentially. Like it won't show up in the algebra that we do, but that's, uh, that's something to kind of think about. So don't worry about it too much right now, but it could happen that that dot product is negative, and then you like kind of get like a negative magnitude, which doesn't really make any sense. Uh, but we'll see what to do with that. So use a right triangle, 
for a cosine a different way. So what we did so far was we said that this is a vector, this is a vector, we know both of them. So we can state the cosine of that angle um, using the dot product. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at this as a right triangle and say in the right triangle, there's a relationship, right? We know that the cosine of theta should be, so it's not the vector A over the vector V, it's the magnitude of A over the magnitude of V. So if you look at that, we have written cosine two different ways. Theta is the same angle. Uh, the vector A is the same, the vector V is the same. So we have two expressions for cosine. So what we can do is we can set them equal. Uh, and so we'll be writing down that the magnitude of A over the magnitude of V is equal to U dot V over magnitude of U magnitude of V. Okay, so if you look at this, you can see that the magnitude of V has shown up twice, which means I can actually just like uh, multiply both sides by the magnitude of V, just solve for the magnitude of A, I guess. However you want to think about that. Um, here we go, magnitude of A is U dot V over the magnitude of U. So it's a little weird because uh, as I mentioned, the dot product could have been negative and then it's like we're getting the magnitude of A is negative and that doesn't really make sense. But think of that as the direction, right? Like vectors have magnitude and direction. Think of that as the direction kind of creeping in, right? So more often than not, this is just gonna be positive uh, for the problems that we do. But if you get a negative, you can kind of just like not overthink it. Just be like, oh yeah, so that just means it's in, the, in a direction that's opposite to, um, what we're dealing with. So, I mean, I let me draw you a picture when that would happen. So that would happen if this is the vector u and then this is the vector v, right? So if this is v, then what we want to do, the angle is obtuse, right? So when we find a and b, what's going to happen is that a will have to go this way and then b We'll go this way. And so that negative is telling you instead of A going in the same direction as you, it goes in the opposite direction. So that can happen. Um, and it's not really a problem. I mean, it, mathematically, like algebraically and arithmetically, like you won't even notice. You'll just be doing the problem and you'll get your answer and you'll be like, huh, that's weird. All right, find a unit vector in the direction of A. All right, well, so let's think that through. So A is parallel to U. A is parallel to U, which means that A and U have the same unit vector. I mean, that's, that's basically what that means. So if I'm basically saying that A over the magnitude of A should be equal to U over the magnitude of U, right? Because they are parallel. Since A is parallel to U, that's a property of parallel vectors is that they have the same unit vector or they could differ by at most a negative um, which would be this like obtuse angle situation that we drew over here um, but again i'm not really worried about that despite how i keep talking about it uh, so this means that i know that the vector a is going to be the magnitude of a times u over the magnitude of u so to think this through, we take u, we take this vector, and turn it into a unit vector. And that gives us the direction that a should be going in. Then we just multiply by the magnitude of a, and that's going to give us our vector a. But if we uh, keep in mind that we have already figured out the magnitude of a, this is this. So we're going to be able to make that substitution so uh, after that, find the values of the components by hand. Ugh, I don't really want to do that yet. I mean, we'll do it. It's fine. Uh, another thing, so we can make the substitution, I guess. So we could say that um, A is going to be equal to U dot V magnitude of U times 
u over the magnitude of u. There's actually an interesting thing here because we're multiplying the magnitude of u by itself, which means that we're really just, we're, we're doing magnitude of u times magnitude of u. That's the magnitude of u squared, which is actually u dot u. So like we could use that fact to work something out potentially. I don't think we actually need to. Um, so what are the vectors here? So we have u and v. u is uh, 6, 1, and v is 8, 4. 6, 1, 8, 4. Where did I think I was going to do this work? Hard, hard to know. I mean, I guess I'll do it here. Uh, v, I forgot, 8, 8 4, I think it was. No, nah, that's, well, maybe. 8, 4, and I think that u is 6, 1. Let me just check. Because uh, if you start off wrong, you're guaranteed wrong. Okay, so we got that. Here we go. So u dot v is uh, 48 plus 4. So I got 52. And then uh, I'm actually, I'm going to do the thing where I think I, I just do u dot u uh, to get, well, the magnitude of u is square root of 37. So it's going to be over 30. So this will be radical 37. And then here we got 6 over, or, so it's supposed to be the unit vector, right? So 6 over radical 37, 1 over radical 37. So one thing that's kind of interesting is if you don't start with radicals, you will never get radicals in your answer. Like uh, rational coordinates give you rational coordinates when you do this. So when you get that radical 37, don't worry about it, right? So this comes up radical 37, and you're like, uh-oh. But because you know there's going to be another radical 37 because the magnitude of u is there twice, it's just going to multiply out. So rational gives you rational. So uh, keep that in mind. So this is going to be the vector a, I think. So that's 312 over 37 and then 52 over 37. That's kind of gross. So this should be a. Ugh. OK, so we got a, maybe, potentially. We'll check it on the calculator in a minute. Um, so we got a, and then if you think about it, let's go back. I know that a plus b should equal v. So I'm obviously just going to figure it out as I know that a plus b equals v, which means that b is going to be v minus a. So b should be, what was v? v is 8, 4, right? Somewhere, yeah, 8, 4. And then we're going to subtract A, which we think is, holy cow, 312 over 37 and 52 over 37. These are like really annoying arithmetic problems usually. So if we were going to keep going on this, I mean, should we? Probably not, but 240 and 56, 296 over 37, and then uh, 4 is 120 and 28, 148 over 37, 312, 37, and 52 over 37. All right, so uh, 4, 16, negative 16 over 37. And uh, what is this? 98, 96, I think, over 37. OK, so I think that that's B. So I think, I think that A is this. And I think that B is this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check this on the calculator. So I know this process, like the first time, the first couple times, maybe the first 50 times you do this, uh, can be a little confusing, but it's same steps every time. Make up your own vectors and just do it. So sharing the calculator, uh, let's see. So it's doing some weird calculus thing. That's why there's e to the sine of 1 over uh, 4 factorial. Strange, right? All right, so how can I do this best on the calculator? I'm going to store uh, u is equal to 6, 1, and v is equal to 8, 4. OK, so um, I know that I need to do, uh, what is it? So it's the dot product of 
u and v divided by the norm of u. So these are, you should know the buttons to press by now, right? It's menu 7c3, I think, is dot product. Uh, menu 7, 7, enter is norm. So these are things you want to know. And then unit vector is menu 7, C1, unit vector of U. This should give me A. So I'm going to store that as A. A is equal to this, which is actually, I think, what I got. Ooh, feeling pretty good. And then B is going to be V minus A. So negative 16 and 96. Wow, I'm pretty impressed with myself. So A plus B has to equal uh, V, which it does. And then uh, the dot product of A and B should be zero because they're supposed to be orthogonal. And it is. And those are like the best checks that you can do, I think. Um, so I'm going to go back. And also the, the one last thing that I would do, I mean, there's like, you know, that's, that's about as good as you can do is check with checking. Um, the one last thing I would do though, is if you look at the vectors that we got, right, we got this, whatever this, uh, so, a is going uh, to the right and up, but like a lot to the right and not that much up. B is going slightly back to the left and up. And if you look at the picture, that makes sense. So if you have a good picture, you can kind of get a sense of whether or not you're, you're in the ballpark at least. Anyway, I know this is a lot. And what you probably need to do is just do this process a couple of times. So you can literally make up whatever vectors you want. Decide what you want V to be, decide what you want U to be, and then solve it and check it. So I'm going to end this here. I will come back in the next video and do some more. So see you there.